as women, what does our life look like after Eve? What exactly is our collective story and how can we really own our narrative and rise above any old predispositions or thoughts or feelings? Women of wisdom, today is a Wise Women Wednesday like unlike any other because what we're going to be talking about is life after Eve. And I am so excited and so honored to be bringing in my dear friend, the captivating, the amazing, the doctor, Jenny Rain. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Des. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. I'm so excited to have you. For those of you who are new to the world of Jenny Rain, Jenny, you do so much from empowering women to really get clear on their boundaries, to really start understanding the nuances of unhealthy relationships, to really just being able to step into our sovereignty. And I know that's how we connected because we are here on a mission. Yes. Yes, we are. But one thing that I love about you is you've been spending such a big part of your life really diving into Eve, diving into our story as women, you know, and when it comes into the space, Jenny, how did you get into this field? Uh, I stumbled across it. I was in the middle of my doctorate in psychology and really felt called to start sharing my wisdom um, on social media and then felt called to step into coaching. I have wanted to be a counselor since I was a little kid, just never felt healthy enough to do it. So it was during my doctorate that I was watching all these people around me step into the healing field. And I was like, oh, I got to do that. I got to help the women around me just get better, be better. So it just, I accidentally stumbled into it and here I am. (laughs) I love that, you know, and ladies, women of wisdom, drop in the chat me if you've accidentally stumbled into some part of your life story. Mm -hmm. You know, this wasn't a plan for me either to be a somatic embodiment practitioner you know if anything 10 years ago I would have been like I hate my body there's no way I'm gonna like um it will never be my best friend you know and here I am in this field and I just love when we can surrender you know to our heart's desires and our heart's calling and yeah you I just I think about your work because I've sat under you know your beautiful courses before and like you are such a natural in that space. You are so intuitive and connected and like your ability to emotionally attune to where women are is like, I have not seen a lot of women who are as good at doing this as you are. And it's because you're so tapped into your body. And I appreciate that about you. Oh my goodness, Jenny, I'm going to go to sleep. Like, that's it. That's how I want to end my day. (laughs) You know, and Jenny, thank you for for that acknowledgement. I receive it with such gratitude, you know, and thinking about our bodies and thinking about even our stories, our collective stories of Eve, you know, I feel like there's so many nuances and ribs that we can really pull from to really kind of nicely played. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ladies, if you've got any puns, drop them in the chat or write them <laughs> because, you know, we believe in a ponderful space. Yeah. And, Jenny, you know, I've got some thoughts. I've got some thoughts, but I'd love to hear, I guess, maybe a concept overview for people or for women who are like, you know, what does my life have to do with Eve? What what is this connection? Because I could see some, you know, resistance might show up, some confusion, some like really strong separation, you know, maybe even resentment. And ladies, again, whatever you're feeling, no judgment, we're here for it all. But yeah, Jenny, can you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yeah. So it is my belief that we as women are all connected all the way back to the garden, all the way back to that first potential action that Eve took in grabbing that apple that was basically shamed out of her hand, right? We are we are living in the legacy of the 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 potential that could have been ours but that was ripped away in the garden. And what does that mean for women? We're seeing it across uh, across our lives. We step into the boardrooms and we're depotentiated or we're not allowed to reach our potential because patriarchy and capitalistic systems elevate 
males over women. And hey, I'm, we're not slamming males here. I love, I have an amazing, amazing partner, but women have not been allowed to step into our full potential. And that affects our relationships. That affects our ability to be great mothers. It affects our ability to be great friends. And it ravishes in a horrible way, the sisterhood that we're able to create with one another. So I feel called to pull back what it was originally supposed to be as our legacy to live after Eve. And what I believe that means is living in community, in the sisterhood, in the sage wisdom that we are called to live in as women, that that is our birthright. That is why we grabbed for that apple that was taken away from us. And I want to get that back for us. Mm, at mic drop, <laughs> mic drop. You know, because there were so many, I I was on that path with you and I felt like you were holding my hand at, you know, so much of what I advocate for women is this acceptance of it's not our fault. Yes. Whether it is lashing out, whether it is shame, guilt, you know, catastrophizing, anxiety, it's not our fault. You know, we live in this world where we are taking in all these stories and all these narratives mm -hmm. and what a powerful way to lean even more into the, it's not our fault. When we look at the lineage and the shame that women have had really since the beginning, like you said, yeah. and what a beautiful plot twist, you know, to think, Hey, what if actually what if grabbing that apple wasn't just some mistake, wasn't just sin tempting us. It was a conscious choice to be able to live, a conscious choice to be able to expand beyond what we were in. Like how different would the story, would the narrative be yep. if, if we just accepted and stood in our choice? Yes. And stood in our power. See, yeah. I believe that Apple had agency that Eve was reaching for. And in the moment that she reached for it, the thing that she discovered as a woman is that she could bring life in creative, generative, nurturing ways that are uniquely feminine, that are unique in how we express who we are as women in the world. That's not to depotentiate men. It's just to say we have a different way of being. And yeah. so I believe that her reaching for that was her reaching for what is my potential in this world and what's the legacy I wanna leave for women. And then what happened is all of that story got overlaid with, with an ideology that was patriarchal, white, male, cisgender, heterosexual, and we lost the thread of the agency of Eve, and we've yep. struggled for decades to try and get it back. You know, this first started coming into being in the 70s with the consciousness raising groups that were going on in women's liberation and feminism, and it's, it's starting to resurge now in the world. And so I wrote about like all of that, and I actually yeah. did write an alternative narrative. Like, what could it have looked like if Eve was allowed to hold on to her potential, you know, to hold on to the apple? Yeah, and to hold on to her agency. You know, yes. You're saying. And it's, you know, I don't, I've, ladies, drop me in the chat if you've ever read the works of Paolo Coelho, because that he's yeah. someone who really speaks about this, where he talks about this idea that the apple, you know, wasn't necessarily sin, but it had agency, it had power, it had potential, that there was such sovereignty, you mm -hmm. know, that was in that moment of choice, mm -hmm. you know, and I love, like you're saying, you know, how, what that narrative would look like yeah. if we could pull that apple and we didn't have man ripping it away. We didn't have judgment ripping it away. We didn't just drop it on the ground because we got scared of our power, of our potential. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jenny, I feel like this is a beautiful freeing thing. Like I can feel deeper layers of myself being liberated, but at the same time, like what, what now, you know, now that we have this idea of I feel like what I'm hearing are these deeper anchors and so many of our truths, it's validating the fact that we've been taught to swallow our words, mm -hmm. that anytime we reach for our potential, anytime we reach or hold on to our agency, it becomes unsafe. It becomes maybe even violent, you know, really in the space of verbal, you know, yeah. aggression. But how do we, how do we step into our container of safety? How do we step back into the original intention of Eve? Yeah. 
I, it all goes back to cooperation. I think so much of what happened in the garden metaphorically was the separation between all of humankind, right? And where Eve grabbed, Adam got fearful, humankind fell apart. And so I think as we move forward, what it looks like is cooperation. We have so many broken relationships in our world that if you draw a red thread, it goes all the way back to the garden. So how does it how does 2024 look if we can cooperate with this, our sisters, if we can cooperate with the men in our lives, if they can cooperate with us, if they feel safe bringing their femininity, because men have both femininity and masculinity, just like women have both femininity and masculinity. What if it was a partnership where we flowed instead instead of this antagonistic relationship? That's what I want to see in our world. Right. And, and that beautiful ebb and flow of surrender and, you know, to receive it because it's such a beautiful thing. Even now we're both kind of practicing the, you know, the dominance and the surrender of the masculine and feminine where it's like, I'm talking, but you're, so I'm in the role of like masculine and dominance. And then, and you're listening. So you're in the mode of like surrender and receiving, but every time you nod your head, it becomes that conscious ebb of flow. Mm -hmm. I'm now receiving your cooperation. I'm like these little nonverbal cues, which is such a big superpower for women. It's you know? such a superpower. And so really, I love that invitation. And ladies, if you're really looking for some empowered next steps to take, really think about how, how can you start being in more cooperation? And if you're like, does Jenny, there's no effing way. I hate that word. <laughs> you know? It's okay. I get it. Especially if being in cooperation with women brings up old traumas. Totally. But then yourself. What do you need to feel safe in cooperation? Because mm -hmm. I think, Jenny, that's such a big, we have so many wounds, you know, so our, our ancestors. And so I know that safety is such a big thing. And, you know, I'm curious, in, in your beautiful brain and the dissertation and getting your PhD in this field, were there any, any things that you were just like, I'll never be the same after knowing this? Yeah, I I think so much. And I like I dug back into the, you know, I was specifically going into an evangelical context and the biblical text because that has been the most um I think damaged in so many ways and I wanted to mine for the divine feminine in that because I was like I need to know that I have a divine referent other that is feminine that I can look to so that I can individuate and I can fully potentiate in this world. And so I think what I found over and over and over again throughout that was just, again, another thread was we have to help women find their voices again. Women have lost their voices collectively. We're seeing that in the religio-political sphere. We're seeing that in the boardroom. We're seeing it in medical systems. We're seeing it in schools. We have to help other women find their voices in relationships, in friendships. We have to create that space to elevate women's voices. And again, as Nell Morton said in 1970, we have to help hear other women into speech because when a woman has her voice she has power to affect change in her world she has power to bring her wisdom and she has power to change the systems that she is a part of so if we do nothing else in our generation if we can help other women find their voices we will reduce a heck of a lot of trauma in our sphere and change mm -hmm. relationships and, you know, thank you. And ladies, women of wisdom, you know, give yourself a, just a moment of breath and acknowledgement because the fact that you're in this community space speaks volumes to your desire, your readiness and your strength to already be in cooperation, to already be turning the tables and flipping the script and creating that space of validating other women of sharing your own experiences, of being a witness and really helping heal that relationship wound. And, you know, I, I, I love like the alignment of all this. A couple of weeks ago, I brought in another woman named Lucy and she was talking about this divine feminine essence. Yeah, you know. I love Lucy. Oh my goodness. So not Lucy Houghton, who's also been in here and also ladies like search the Lucy's because we've got yep. some hot ones. <laughs> Butler. And she, yeah. her goal as well is really, 
how can we start mining through our old leaders and really start finding the divine feminine essence in that space. Yes. And she was talking about it from the perspective of Mary Magdalene, but I love this. And I, I, ladies, you know, one little reflective question for your day, you know, as you are brushing your teeth at night or whatever, ask yourself where today have I experienced the divine feminine essence? Mm -hmm. Because I know many of us go to sleep thinking about gratitude and what we're grateful for, but I wonder what shift would happen in your day to day if you could acknowledge the moments you were in your divine feminine essence or when others around you were. How different do you think that would shift the energy and maybe even allow you to step into your feminine sovereignty even more? Mm. And I think we as women need education on that. I need, I wrote a whole freaking dissertation and I need education <laughs> on that because I was raised in, you know, patriarchal white religion and mm -hmm. I wasn't taught the divine feminine was ostracized and demonized. I wasn't taught how to find her. And I have literally spent my life trying to find who she is, how to reach her, how to reflect her essence. And I think that there are a lot of women out there like me, you know, who are, and, and again, not to, not to demonize Christianity. There are beautiful things that have come out of it. My tradition never taught me about the femininity that was resident in that tradition. And I have been suffering ever since. And yeah. I want to see women freed from that because it impacts their relationships. It impacts men when men don't have access to the divine feminine they don't get access to the feminine in them, you know, and, and then they become all testosterone forward and like hard charging and, and, yeah. and that's not how they're supposed to live either. So I would love to see some courses and classes on how to find her. And I will be the first one to enroll because I'm still working on this. Mm. You know, Jenny, thank you so much for these little tidbits and these insights, because each time you speak, I find myself going deeper into this own journey. You know, at first I was like, oh, I'm sure I probably have some like religious wounds around the feminine. And I was like, ba -ba -da, like, but not really thinking too much. And as you were speaking, I remember having that moment. You know, I was in Sunday school and, you know, I was raised Catholic and eating the donuts and like kind of being in trouble because I was late. But I loved, you know, doesn't matter. I was just eating like that powder donut or sugar all over my face. And I remember the first moment where I felt the shame of being a woman, the danger of being a woman, the lack of trust and value that came from women, you know, mm -hmm. and it's such a interesting thing to really reflect on at what age we really started taking in the wounds of womanhood and maybe taking in narratives of martyrdom, narratives yeah. of nurturer, narratives of being the holy mother. And really seeing like how knowing or not knowing, again, it's not our fault. We're all just learning and coping as we grow and evolve. Ladies, you're a beautiful onion, let me tell you. <laughs> no, and just really thinking about how can we continue to consciously look at our inner selves and maybe some of the masks or the layers that we've put on our unique divine feminine essence without judgment. And really, like you're saying, leaning into our feminine superpower that even if in just the beginning, it's allowing your friends, your daughters, your sisters, your moms, your neighbors to just be heard. Mm, yes. Just be heard. Jenny, I feel like I want to talk to you forever. And I know these are meant to be like short and powerful. And I know we will. For everybody who's, you know, watching this, go ahead and drop your best friend's name in the chat because I have a feeling I'm going to be putting Jenny Rain down there for <laughs> And, you know, if anybody who's watching this, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm fascinated. I would love to learn more about the work that Jenny does, whether it's coming home to the divine feminine essence, learning how to incorporate that into boundary setting or relationship healing. I'll be dropping a link to Jenny's website where you'll be able to check out her classes, access some free goodies that she has and everything in between. Jenny, before we leave, are there any final words of wisdom or thoughts that you would like to share with the women in this community who, who might be hearing about this new narrative, this new embodiment of truth for the first time? Yeah. I believe that if you landed here today, you're not here by mistake. Um, I believe that 
if any of this has really touched your heart, there's, there's something that is calling you to this work and find your people that can take you to the next step, risk being in sisterhood, you know, and, and risk taking a chance again, because when you can find those, those communities, those safe communities of women, it can change your life, you know, and, um, there's just, there's nothing like it, nothing like it. So that would be my, my parting encouragement. Oh, mm, ladies, give some love for Jenny in the chats, whether you're watching this now live or in the future replay, know that we are here for it all. And ladies, this is a little reminder that tomorrow we'll be going in live at, at 9 a.m. Pacific for our Thursday tickles. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about the power of a container. What Love does that it. mean? Find out tomorrow, ladies, at 9 a.m. where I tickle you with information for your personal expansion. Why? So you can have more power and choice in navigating all of life's challenges and adventures. Jenny, thank you so much, ladies. This has been part of our Wise Women Wednesday series. Find them all under hashtag Wise Women Wednesday. Jenny. So fun. Thank you. Thank you. And before we leave, I like to do this fun, awkward thing where we just high five each other off. Yes. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. All right. That felt good. Thank you, wise women. Thank you, wise women. Bye. <laughs>